following video is going to be rather long. It was a project that I've never done before and I thought I would start with the easiest procedure but that failed and I've decided to keep the footage to document my thought process. If you get bored easily, fast forward to the portion where I use the lamp nipple to repair the mirror. Hello David here, welcome to part two of the Corvette C5 broken mirror repair. I've done a lot of research and I haven't found a whole lot of sources for repair. It seems like most of the owners are just buying replacement mirrors and replacing the mirror. What I did find was one person who uh, removed the wiring, took the spring out, get some light on that. See the spring in there. Took the spring out, compressed the spring in a vise, and then wire tied the spring in its uh, coiled position, and then put it back in place, got a washer, and welded the washer at the end of this part right here. And uh, that's certainly doable. The other repair I noticed was using one of these uh, light fixture nipples. Of course this is a smaller size, this is probably the proper size. It, come, it has to fit inside of this stem. So this one I have here is too short, so it would need a longer piece to have to come out to this side and then uh, two lock nuts would have to be locked together at each end. This part would have to be cut off right at the groove for the washer to get the spring to its proper compressed size. The spring would hit a washer at the end of the two lock nuts at this end of the stud because you want to have the, the washer right about at that dimension from the bottom of the stud up to the uh, designed height which would be right here. So uh, the drawbacks I see in that is that the diameter here, since it has to fit inside of this stub, there's a lot less space for the wiring loom and I think there's a, a better chance for uh, chafing of the wires inside of here. I think it would be kind of a tight fit. I think it's doable and uh, either method you go with the wires have to be removed and you can decide if you want to either cut the wires and then solder them back into place or if you want to dismantle these uh, connectors you can probably feed the whole thing out if you dismantle the connectors one would hope anyway but that's not for certain while uh, studying the process of repair, I was wondering if it was possible to do the repair without pulling the wires. I suppose another option would be to take this assembly apart. There would be a shorter length to run the wires to get them out, but I don't know what's in here. If you open this up, will all these little tiny pieces fall out and be impossible to put back together? I don't know. I tried doing some research on the part numbers on here. I couldn't find any information or schematics about it. This spring, I know my hand's in the way. Let's get a light on that. If you look at that spring, those are pretty beefy coils. I'm wondering... can't squeeze it with my hand, but I'm wondering would it be possible to compress the spring with wires and then hold it taut or hold it compressed with some wire ties and if that's possible to do that I wouldn't have to rewire it and then I could uh, I could grind uh, grooves, two grooves, one on each side opposing one another and then uh, cut a washer so that it'll slip over that and then weld the washer in place. That's what I'm going to try first. Okay, let's check the compressibility of this spring. Yeah, 
Yeah, I am able to compress it. Let me get some wire ties. See if I could compress it. This is one of those times when it would be helpful to have three hands. Okay, so this is what I've got. I've gone around to each one progressively. I've got four wire ties. Compressing the spring. And I just went around from one to the other. Turning the spring as I went. Compress it with the pliers. Pull a little bit. Went around to the next one. Compressed the spring. Pulled the wires tighter. This is what I've got. Let's see if I could get it below the profile of the stud. I have to push the spring down in place. The problem with this method is you have to use the original washer, which is a piece of spring steel. You can see that, just a flat piece of steel. Let's see what we've got. Well, the spring is not seated. I have to get the spring seated. I just cannot get that spring seated deeply enough on the pedestal in order to be able to work on the stud. So it looks like I'm going to have to remove the wiring. So that's going to be the next step. And I'm thinking I ought to look inside of this motor and see what it looks inside of there. Okay, there's three screws that hold this motor down to the base. Here, here, and here screws look like that and it is a T10 Torx bit so that's what that looks like there's more numbers on this side maybe I'll see if I can find some information on the internet about that I'm having a heck of a time separating this motor case there's a clasp here and a clasp there kind of separating here but it's really tight here even with this clasp released so I don't know if it's glued shut but I'm just afraid I'm gonna break it so I'm gonna take a look at the wires on the other end and see if I could get those connectors off by the way I did look up the numbers of the mirror motor that was printed on the back and I couldn't find anything on the internet so I'm gonna Try taking this connector apart. I made a picture here of what wires go where so I could get them back in the same place. And I see there's a clip on the back. I think it's just a matter of squeezing these in and pulling out. I got something going on here. I gotta make sure I get it back the way it came. It looks like the connector for the wire is inboard. Okay, this is the larger wire connector. There's six wires coming out of there, and it's an eight connector terminal. I made a schematic drawing where the wires go and which ones are empty. Get this thing out of here.
and just like the other one the wire terminal end is inboard. Next I'm going to proceed with pulling the wires out through the mirror. Get this grommet off of here. It's about an inch off of this label. Thing have an up or a down. Yeah, flat side goes down towards the car. Here's the bottleneck here. There's a part of the wiring harness that won't go through the bottom of the pedestal. And you can see there's extra tape here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it off from I guess from here to here. I was able to remove the tape from here that made the wires fatter and it was holding down this piece which was located about here and I assume this is here to reinforce it in case the window going up and down might have uh, been chafing against this uh, wire loom I don't know but I'm gonna put it back on got this part off Get the motor out. I like the fact that if I ever get this repaired, I'll be doing it without cutting and soldering any wires, trying to keep this part of it original. There we go. This part's out of the way. Let's get the spring out. Take a look at the spring. That's what the spring looks like. There's that washer that they use. You can see it's just a spring clip. It might be too thin to weld on the end of this. But this is how it was connected. Just like that. You can see how flimsy that is with all the power of this spring. Put that on there. Kind of how it goes. Okay, I've got this spring squeezed in a vise. I'm going to take the wire ties off and I'm going to use baling wire to wire around the coil to keep it compressed. I have a tighter compression as you can see and that will give me more space to work with affixing a washer on the end of the mounting stud. So you got the spring wired and I first used baling wire and I had the twists on the outside and there's not enough clearance inside the mirror for the twists to be on the outside so I redid it with the the twists on the top of the wire but the clearance is real tight and I might have to take this baling wire off and and use this thinner wire that I used on these these other four wires because when you get the uh, get the spring inside the mirror you got to push down hard to get it seated. And then for clearance, let's get this in there. That's the amount of room I have for clearance. There's barely enough room to get the washer in there. The washer's not going to seat with that baling wire, so I'm definitely going to have to change the wire. And I might even have to use something thinner than my thinner wire. I managed to find an old washer in my washer bin. I had to file it down to fit. The inside diameter was too small. Outside diameter was a little too big. But it fits over the spring pretty nicely. And it fits over the whatever you call this thing in the mirror. I've been calling it the stud I guess. 
if you're going to go the route of using the light fixture nipple, this is a one half inch diameter on the outside. As you can see it's a little tight fit in here, but it does fit if you were to go in through the back. See that? It does go in. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to get a round or rat tail file and just clean that out a little bit. It's, it's real close. It just needs to be cleaned out a little bit. And if you do go this route with this uh, with this nipple, it's going to be a really tight fit to get the wires through there. You might have to cut the wires and solder them back together. Because I could get that in. And when you get over here, it's really tight. You're going to have to do a few at a time to get it through. And then it's questionable whether you'll get this insulation through. I don't know. That's why I think you might have to cut it near the top end of the, the wiring loom. Hopefully I won't have to go this route. Next question is the spring. There's no clearance inside to cut these wires once I get this washer welded in place. You can see in there. I could reach the front three wires, but when that washer's situated over the top of the spring, there's no way to reach around to the back to cut those wires. So I'm going to have to cut the wires before I install it and hope that the spring stays compressed. Maybe I could put a fourth wire closer to this, but that's the dilemma I'm looking at. This is where I'm at with my weld. Will it hold? I don't know. I'm going to let it cool off and then remove the wires. Oh, bad news guys, my weld gave way. <clears throat> I was using flux core wire on a MIG welder. And uh, that was the best I could do. I suppose if I was a better welder, it might have worked better, but it just didn't work for me. I think I'm going to have to go to plan B. Use one of these things. <clears throat> I wonder if these come in a slightly larger diameter and I could cut this off and replace it with a wider one of these so I'll have more room for the wire loom. I'll have to do some research on that. Okay, this metal is pot metal and I'm not confident welding it again. The uh, height of the working spring height comes up to about that line. So I'm going to grind this pedestal down to that line. Because I'm going to use a lamp nipple. That's a half inch outside diameter lamp nipple. Three inches long. And it does fit inside the hole. I do have some slag in there that I'm going to have to file out. I also have a washer that will fit over the lamp nipple. And the washer fits over the spring very well. I have a selection of lock nuts that I'm going to use to lock nut both ends of the lamp nipple. Then I have another washer which fits on the lamp nipple that I'll use on the other side. And it's small enough that it'll fit within that recess in there like that so that I'm not getting too much uh, pressure or too much uh, uh, abrasion force against the, the soft metal. Okay, I've got the pedestal ground down and I filed the slag out of the center. So the lamp knuckle fits through. And I also took the rat tail file and I started filing out the center of the nipple. Not only to smooth it out, but just to give me a, a one thousandth or two thousandth extra space inside to have room for the wires. About the next size larger than this, the hardware store 
and I went to a very large hardware store that has a lot of supplies does not have the 5 8 inch lamp nipple. I did see them online but I really didn't want to get involved in cutting this off and then hogging it out. I was concerned that uh, just having the, the, the lamp nipple support the spring I was afraid that it might wobble and uh, I was afraid of failure so I should be used to failure by by now but I'm not so I'm just going to go with this half inch nipple. Okay, I did a mock-up with the parts that I have on hand. And it does turn on its axis like it's supposed to. I had an old nut sitting in my inventory of nuts that I used on the bottom. Which, uh, the fitting in there is so tight I can't get a, a wrench on there to tighten it. So I had to tighten the two jam nuts at the top. And I use a 17 millimeter wrench on that. So you can see there's two nuts in there. Get some light in there for you. I'll take it apart so you can see the parts. But uh, my thinking is there's not a whole lot of clearance in the top of there to get a wrench on there. I was hoping I can lock tight and jam those two nuts together at the top and then tighten it from the bottom, but I can't tighten it from the bottom with that nut. So uh, I can either tighten it from the top with what I have or go to the lamp store and get a couple of nuts that are made for those lamp nipples. I'm putting that second top nut off. Oh, one other thing, if you look at the clearance on the bottom, this is the 3 8 inch lamp, or I'm sorry, the 3 inch lamp nipple. It's too close for comfort to the profile of the pedestal bottom, so I want to trim off maybe a quarter of an inch or 3 8 on that part of the nipple. I don't want it scratching the pain of the door. Okay, so I have these two nuts and the washer on top. And the spring. Was that so tight? On the bottom I have the smaller washer and that nut. Okay, I filed the lamp nipple down and I reassembled it. Get some light in there. I'd like to have maybe one more turn on that top nut just so that I have the, the nipple fully grabbed by those two lock nuts. And this is the clearance on the bottom. As you could see, there's a good, probably uh, three eighths of an inch clearance. There's more clearance on this side than on that side. And I decided. Probably to... wondering where I'm at on the length of the nipple after I ground it down, and I'm right about. Two and nine sixteenths. Also, since I was grinding this on this, and I'm not going to have the insulation wrap around the the wiring loom, I'm going to um, hone the inside diameter. I'm going to use one of these Dremel hones because I want it nice and smooth, so I don't get any chafing on the wires. Okay, so here's my plan of attack. I'm going to clean the nipple threads off with acetone really well and I'm going to put the assembly together and on the inside of the mirror way at the top I'm going to lock these two lock nuts together 
as close to the end as possible to give me enough clearance to thread the wires through. And I'm going to use this uh, semi-permanent thread locker to hold everything together in addition to jamming the nuts together. And then once that's in, on the bottom part of here with this inserted, then I'm going to tighten down with a nut and a deep wall socket on the bottom and that's going to be locked tighted in and then I'll use a second jam nut to jam that together. And I'm going to put a little dab of silicone grease in here just to give it a little bit of uh, lubrication. I've got the lock nuts lock tighted together at the top as you can see in there. And I did a dry run and thank goodness it was a dry run I didn't lock tight the nut on the bottom but you see the recess in there that recess was too deep for my deep wall socket to grab the nut I had had one of these washers on there and as you can see the recess in there was still too low for my socket to grab so I bought another washer and I'm going to do another dry run to make sure that my socket will grab the nut. Okay that works. My socket does reach the nut now with two washers under there. If you can see the angle there. That second washer brings the nut up above that recess in the housing. And uh, you don't have to worry about torquing too hard on that nut because the the washer on top in there rests on the top of the mounting stud which uh, mounts to this lower pedestal down here so don't refine it too hard just get it good and snug now I'm going to disassemble this and use the Loctite and lock those two nuts together on top of these two washers Okay, all the lock nuts are in place. Let's test it out. Oh, that one takes more effort, but it does go. It does go the other way. There we go. The next stage will be threading the wire through the lamp nipple. And I'm going to have to take this plastic sheathing off because it's just too big to go through the nipple. I'm going to have to run the wires through individually. And my thoughts were to cut the sheath at a cross section around here, leave this part on, and then slip this off if I can because I want to use it intact. And then when I get the wires through, cut off about a, a five inch section and then slip this back on. I marked the wires with some fingernail polish here about where the bottom end of this sheath will be. Got my cut made. Let's see if I can slide this off. I thought this was going to give me more of a fight and I might have to squirt some silicone down there but It is moving slow, making some progress. Turned out these metal pieces on the end were hung up on the edge of the plastic and once I moved those out of the way, it slid off a little better. There we go. Okay, they're free. step is to get those wires through there. Success! I've got all the wires through. I got the first four long wires through first and then after that I found it was easier to thread one wire at a time. So that's what I did. That's what we've got here. I'm going to measure how much of this sheathing to cut off and put the sheathing back on. 
As for putting the sheath back onto the wires, I'm finding it's easier to put all the wires through at once. And you pretty much have to go about where the wires are and hold it straight while you push in. Because if you hit a curved section, it's going to hang up. Might be helpful to have an assistant hold the sheathing straight for you while you're while you're pushing on it. Starting to slow up. I might have to spray some silicone spray in there to give me a little more action. What's oh, going now? It's about it's about right here now. Okay, I've got it. I found that you really got to massage where the ends of the wires are. Sometimes you got to roll it to get these metal contacts to compress. If that makes any sense. Trying to pull it the rest of the way out. Yeah, I'll keep working on it. Okay, I've got it. Got all the wires. This is the piece of section that I cut off the other end. Let's measure it. So I cut off a two and one quarter inch section from right over here. Get some light on that. You can see that sheathing goes right up to the lamp nipple. It was important for me to cut off the sheathing on the other end because I wanted to save this factory stock number so that everything still kind of gives the appearance of being stock. And let's start putting some parts together. This is the gasket for the mirror. This side goes towards the mirror. The other side goes towards the door. I had to go back to the original or beginning part of the video to find where these two parts went. This part goes over the sheath and sits about an inch from the label. I don't know if it's necessary or not. It probably just protects the, the wiring while it's in the door. But may as well have it looking stock, right? There we go. That sits about here and then each end is taped down with electrical tape. I suppose electrical tape was specified just to keep that piece in place so it wouldn't fall off the wiring loom while the car was going down the assembly line. Let's get that grommet piece on. Goes about there.
Our next step is to install the mirror and I got some very good tips from the Corvette owners forum. It's corvetteforum.com if you check out uh, the C5 tech section July 26. There's a poster XLR8 SHN that started a, a thread about installing the mirror and how the pieces on the back of the mirror have to pop into place on here otherwise the motor adjustments won't work. Also that they recommend that the this part of the mirror is flimsy and if you push on the sides it could break and they recommend pushing on the center with the palm so that you spread out the pressure evenly along the glass so it doesn't break on you. And uh, these glass uh, mirrors are available as replacements. So I'm going to I'm going to attach these uh, heat element lines. And I don't think it matters which one goes where. Got my heater wires installed. Got my gloves on. Make sure you got the writing on the mirror at the bottom. And uh, gonna line this up. Press down. Are we lined up? Like it takes a lot of force. Mm. Afraid of breaking it. It's not in. Straighten these posts. That might not be lined up. Those go to these black pegs on the motor. I heard some clicking. Is it in? I heard some more clicking. not falling out. No, it's not fully in. Have to do some more pressing. <sighs> trying to look in there to see what part is caught. Get my flashlight. I'm going to keep playing with it. I put it down on the carpeted floor. That might help. Well, I got some bad news. I cracked the mirror installing it, so I got to order another one. Since the mirror is broken, let's see if I could remove the mirror from the frame. Install the frame without the glass. couple of spots of glue holding it in. I wonder if it's easier to just install this part and then glue the glass to the backing. After the backing's installed, of course you're going to have to grab these two heater wires. Pull that through like this. Which way do they go? 
They don't go through the round hole, they would go through the rectangular hole. But I think it's possible. That way uh, you could see these two pegs in here go to those mounts here. These two parts go to these roundish pegs there. Well, let me work on that. Okay, I think I've got it in. I could see where these two pegs have caught by pushing these in. And before I had that, I had some side-to-side -side wiggle. And I don't have that anymore, so I think it's in. Just have to test the movement with the motor. Order a new piece of glass. That reference I gave you guys from that Corvette Forum website, there was a link in there for a place to buy replacement glass. I don't know if it still works because that was an old post, but I'm going to try it out. I just hooked up the mirror to the electrical system of the car just to make sure the motors were working okay and the left right motor was working okay but the up and down was not and I found out I'm not going to take this apart but I found out that there is a uh, a uh, column on the other side and and you could pull it out of there it's plastic and it's got a little spiral spring around it and I found out that the prongs were sticking out and I just took a plier and I uh, squeezed those plastic prongs a little bit so that they would grab the screws of the motor because the motor would turn and then it would make a click and nothing was moving. It would turn a little bit, there'd be another click, nothing was moving. And I figured that the prongs of the plastic were, were being acted upon by the screw inside the motor. So, uh, and also, judging by the way they had that spring wound around those little claws, I figured that little spring is to hold the claws in that grab the threads of the motor as the motor's turning. So I just uh, push those in a little bit and then I push that back into the motor and uh, now up and down is moving and left is right is mo left and right is moving. And uh, I gonna install this on the car and then I'll, I'll glue the mirror on when the glue come or when the mirror comes in. I don't want to wrap up this project. I've been working on it forever. Uh, the assembly project is just the reverse of the disassembly, and I don't see any point in filming that. I probably already have about 55 or 60 clips I'm going to edit to put together for this video. By the way, my uh, disassembly video is in part one of my series, so you won't see it in this part. But I wanted to take you to the Corvette forum to show you the picture of what that motor looks like. This is the motor and this is the left right movement and this is the up and down movement. So the plastic piece goes in here and uh, depending on how you pull the mirror off of here when you disassemble, that little plastic piece might stick with the mirror and come out from here or it might uh, come apart from the mirror and stay in the motor. In this one they're not here but this is what I'm talking about. These screws turn when you adjust the mirror and the uh, it's threaded inside I believe and then the plastic piece rides the threads inside. Now this person doesn't have a good picture of it because as I scroll down and look at the picture here's the back of his mirror. When he took this mirror off the pieces stayed in the motor but they would be attached here. There's a little ball socket here and a ball socket right there. And uh, these are uh, what allowed a mirror to flex on the ball socket when it's being adjusted. But all the, uh, the adjustment moves are being done in the motor. Okay, I'm going to get on with the reassembly and I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ring that bell. And I hope you have a uh, easier experience with this than I did. Bye now.